In this video, I want to chat about the difference between flatness, parallelism, and profile controlling a flat surface. So I'm going to do everything on the plate, and I'll have some images up there for you of the kinds of drawings I'm talking about. But in the first, we'll talk about flatness and how it gets checked. So the first thing, uh, flatness is an individual requirement. It doesn't have to be flat to anything else. It wouldn't make sense, right? So flatness is when all the points of a surface lie between two parallel planes. Now those, again, planes don't have to be parallel to anything but themselves. So a typical check for flatness, say we have a flatness requirement of 10 thousandths on a surface. We'll use this little plate right here. The typical way you check it, we get a height gauge with a dial indicator on it. We'll put the dial indicator over the workpiece, move the dial until it's at zero, and then sweep the workpiece. And we're looking for how far that needle moves. Okay, so I'm going to sweep basically the whole workpiece, looking for high or low spots. Not finding any, we seem to be good to within one thousandths on this particular work piece. Okay, so that's a flatness check. Now, where it gets different uh, from other checks like parallelism is that say this side was coming up high. So every time you moved it over here, the needle moved to the right and this side was low. What you could do is grab shim stock or whatever and shim the part until you get this needle to run at one or at zero. The trick is if you shim it for a flatness check, right? So we shimmed it, we swept it again, and it was, you know, zero or close to it. That part would be good, but we can't, you know, check half of it, take the shim out and then check the other half. You got to sweep it all at once while it's shimmed. The reason we can do this again, flatness, individual requirement, it isn't necessary that this be parallel to the table. That's just a convenient way to check the part. Okay, so next up, parallelism. We'll check the same part for parallelism. Now, with parallelism, we do have to keep the part flat on the table. The reason is that the table is our datum simulator. So if you see on the drawing and the image in the corner, we've got a datum A, which is the bottom surface of this part we're working with. That's our planar datum. The true geometric counterpart of a plane is another plane. So what we're doing with this datum simulator is trying to find the high spots of the actual uh, datum feature and then let it lay flat. So if this part lays flat, doesn't rock or anything, we can assume it's contacted as many high points as it needs. There's a minimum of three, but it could be more than that. It really doesn't matter. As long as the part lays flat, we've simulated that datum, okay? So if you notice there's a plus or minus dimension that goes to the other side, that is checked separately. So we wouldn't check that with the height gauge necessarily because it's a size dimension that could be a two point check. So we could take a caliper, you know, and flip this part over and check, check, check all the different spots. And that would give us that size dimension. Remember now with the size, we do have a form requirement with that. We can't exceed the MMC. So if we put this dimension together, this part is one point 61 plus or minus 20 thousandths. So if we put the test indicator on it and we ran it over and got a height of 1.64, it would be out of size tolerance and out of form tolerance. Okay. So not really super worried about checking for size. We want to check that parallelism. Interestingly enough, it's the exact same check as flatness, except we can't move the part right? The part has to stay on the plate. It can't be shimmed or anything, but we run the indicator over it. Again, the indicator isn't set to a specific height. We're just trying to zero this uh, dial. Okay. So that's the check for parallelism. Remember the parallelism is separate from the size. However, the parallelism, if you notice the checks are very similar. If something is parallel, it's also flat. So if you check it and the dial indicator moves two thousandths, you can say it's parallel within two thousandths and flat within two thousandths. Okay. 
Next up is profile with profile without a datum reference. This is just a flatness check. Okay, it does the exact same thing as flatness with one continuous surface. Now, if you had two surfaces, so say a part like this that has two coplanar surfaces, that profile would do something different. Now, I have a whole video about that. I'll put a, a card up right here. But for one surface, profile, no datum feature reference, that's checked the exact same as flatness. And you'll check the size requirement as you would anything else, okay? Next up, a little, a little doodle here, uh, profile with one datum reference in this situation does the exact same thing as parallelism, okay? Exact same check. Now again, if you had two separate surfaces, it'd be, there'd be a coplanarity requirement, not a big deal here. We check that profile just like we did for parallelism. The size is treated differently, even though it's a profile. Now this is an outdated technique. It's not supported by the 2018 standard, but you'll still see it out there, whether the author of the drawing you know, wanted to do it that way or not. The only benefit you can get from uh, using profile over parallelism is if you had you know, two coplanar surfaces you were trying to control. So next up, we've got a profile with a basic dimension and one datum feature reference. In this case, this is gonna control size, location, form, and orientation, okay? So that dimension 1.61 uh, and basic means that now we do need to set our dial indicator to a certain height. So we can do that. I can go down to the table, let my indicator go to zero. So I'm gonna run that down and I can hit zero ABS on this. So zero absolute. I can come over to my part, hit zero with my indicator again. And that's going to tell me the actual height of my part. In this case, 1.61, just like the drawing says. Now the difference between this kind of profile with the basic dimension and the other ones is that we have to stay right here at zero and this needle can't move more than whatever the profile tolerance says. So if the profile is 10 thousandths, the needle can move five thousandths either way, but we can't adjust the height indicator up or down. It's fixed to the basic dimension, okay? So that's what I mean. The profile controls basically everything, even though the only difference is that basic dimension, okay? So that's all I have for this video. I just wanted to explain, you know, some of the different ways you'll see things on drawings. Little things matter. So something like a basic dimension on a profile can really change how the thing gets measured. Okay. So that's it for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Check out the channel for more of the GD&T and inspection content coming soon.